such as the Espionage Act of 1917 and the Sedition Act of 1918. The Espionage Act, which was enacted on June 15, 1917, made it illegal for certain acts to interfere with war. Such examples are civil penalties for making false statements and reports that purposely interfere with the war effort. And it also prevented uprisings and disloyalty in the military forces and prohibited interference with the draft. Mrs. Schenck was part of the Socialist Party in the United States. The specific name of the party was the Socialist of America, and Mrs. Schenck was the secretary. The Socialist Party was against the First World War and specifically against having U.S. soldiers going to Europe and killing fellow humans. And in process of the war, the Socialist Party had passed out 150,000 flyers. And when America entered World War I in 1917, Congress passed a law called the Espionage Act. The law said that during wartime, of, wartime obstructing the drafts and trying to make soldiers disloyal or disobedient were crimes. Almost 2,000 people were tried for going against this law. Charles Sneck was against the war. He mailed thousands of pamphlets to men who had been drafted into the armed forces. These pamphlets said that the government had no right to send American citizens to other countries to kill people. Stop the war, fight the war, join the Socialist Party. We need everybody to group up together. We don't want people sending troops into the war. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Who are you? I'm just a uh, protest. I'm just protesting against well, first of all, let me tell you one thing, son. This is actually a public building, and you're not supposed to be passing any pamphlet. So what, what, what you need to do is take the stuff and do it outside, not here. Yeah, but I'm, I got my first... Do so you understand what I told you? Yeah, but I got my Did first... Did you hear what I told you? I don't care about the protest. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you all. I'm talking to you. Oh, you oh. Do you know who I am? No. I'm a police officer. And, and I want to show you my badge right now, son. Let me tell you one thing, buddy. You just assaulted a, a CPD. You want to be under arrest right now for, for doing that. Come on. The government accused Schneck of violating the Espionage Act. It's that Schneck's pamphlets were intended to weaken loyalty of the soldiers and obstruct the <clears throat> military recruiting for World War I. Schneck answered by saying that the Espionage Act was unconstitutional. He said that it broke the First Amendment promise that Congress shall not make a law abridging a person's right to freedom of speech. After working his way through the federal courts, the case was judged by the Supreme Court in 1919. When a nation is at war, many things that might be said in time of peace are such a hindrance to its effort that their utterance will not be endured so long as men fight and that no court could regard them as protected by any constitutional right. The question in every case is whether the words used are used in such circumstances and are of such a nature to create a clear and present danger that they will bring about the substantive evils that Congress has a right to prevent. Schneck was convicted of a 9-0 decision from the Supreme Court. Justice Holmes admitted that in many places and in ordinary times, Schneck would have had a right to say everything that he had said in the, his pamphlets. However, he said that how far a, freedom, a person's freedom of speech extends depends on the circumstances of the time. During war, he thought that the government certainly had the power to prevent obstruction to recruitment. Therefore, it also has the power to punish someone who uses words that are proven to cause such obstructions. So the result of the decision was that the clear and present test was created, which was originated by Justice Holmes. And this situation has occurred in other cases. For example, um, a lower court judge named Learn Hand once said that whenever the government claims that someone's speech poses a danger, Judges must consider both the seriousness of the danger and the likelihood of it actually happening. So they just can assume that the violent nature or whatever would result from that speech. And but that person could not be put could not be punished unless their words do impose the danger. The Espionage Act was unconstitutional because it infringed on Shanks and the Socialist Party's First Amendment rights, even though America wasn't in favor 
of what they were saying. And also, the First Amendment protects political speech and to prevent a, tyr a tyranny of the majority so the government can't infringe on what they're saying, even if they and the majority disagree with it. Oh, Ms. Pearson, I would like to disagree. See, during times of war, we need to keep soldier morale up as, long, as well as the United States people within the United States, I mean. Because we cannot have someone saying well, this war is bad, we are not fighting for the greater good. We have to make sure that the American people know what is right. And what was right was going into Europe to solve this war. Now, I'm sure they had like, their First Amendment right and everything or whatever, but think about that. If the circumstances did not allow for them to do this at this point in time. The circumstances needed that soldier morale was up. Now, I can understand the concept of freedom of speech, but again, we can't allow this to happen. A clear and present danger. He was a clear and present danger to the United States. And what he was saying and what he was telling the American people and future soldiers was not acceptable, especially during the time of war. But that's just the majority of America, as well as the U.S. government, did not want to hear all of this so-called nonsense. And they know that if they, if this speech was spread amongst the rest of the country, it would somehow brainwash the people and feel, I don't need to serve this war. When even though what the Socialist Party was saying to the people was going to have some type of effect, others weren't going to have that. They felt, well. I don't care what this party says, I'm going to be patriotic and serve my country. So you just couldn't, the government and the people just couldn't automatically assume that what the Socialist Party said was going to have a total impact. Do this if Socialists believe in strong and big government. So you know what? They just, well, we were promoting their, what they believed in, and that was government action. Again, keep us under clear and present danger. We need to rely on American people. All the socialists need to keep their noses out of the American people's business. If they're going to try to push their propaganda, put something that is not necessary, and that is, a that is obviously a danger to the American people and those who are willing to fight for the American people. Sure, there are some that are patriotic, but people are easy to mold and manipulate. And with their propaganda and saying how, oh, we can't do this, kill people, whatever, they're taking away our patriots and the people that are loyal to the United States and turning them into their own little joints to allow and just follow the orders of the Socialist Party and know what, the America, what America truly is and what America truly needs to do. Now, moving on. Socialists, this is America. There is no Socialist Party. There is no Capitalist Party. There's a, there's a Democrat and Republican Party. Not Socialist and not a Capitalist. Democrat and Republican. You cannot compare that such 